Imagine traveling from Los Angeles to San Francisco in just 45 minutes without ever leaving the ground. Imagine a new mode of transportation that is faster than a plane, cheaper than a train, and greener than a car. Imagine a futuristic system that uses magnetic levitation and vacuum tubes to propel pods at speeds of over 700 miles per hour. This is the vision of the Hyperloop, a concept that was first proposed by Elon Musk in 2013 and has since captivated the imagination of engineers, entrepreneurs, and investors around the world. But what if this vision was too good to be true? What if the Hyperloop was doomed to fail from the start, plagued by technical, financial, and legal challenges that made it impossible to realize? This is the story of Hyperloop One, the company that once claimed to be the leader in Hyperloop technology, but ended up shutting down without ever carrying a single passenger. This is the story of how a billion dollar idea turned into a disaster. The Hyperloop concept was first popularized by Elon Musk, the visionary entrepreneur behind Tesla, SpaceX, and The Boring Company. In 2013, he published a white paper that described the Hyperloop as a system that would use electric propulsion and air bearings to accelerate and levitate pods inside a low-pressure tube. The pods would travel at near-sonic speeds, with very low friction and drag, making them extremely efficient and comfortable. Musk envisioned the Hyperloop as a way to connect major cities that are less than 1,000 miles apart, such as Los Angeles and San Francisco, or New York and Washington, D.C. He estimated that the cost of building a Hyperloop system would be much lower than that of high-speed rail or highways, and that the ticket price would be affordable for the masses. Musk did not intend to pursue the Hyperloop himself, as he was busy with his other ventures. Instead, he open-sourced the idea and encouraged others to take it further. He also announced a competition for students and engineers to design and test Hyperloop pods, which he hosted at a test track near SpaceX headquarters in California. The competition attracted hundreds of teams from around the world, and some of them went on to form their own Hyperloop companies. One of these companies was Hyperloop One, founded in 2014 by Shervin Peshever, a venture capitalist, and Brogan Bambrogan, a former SpaceX engineer. The company claimed to be the first and only company to successfully demonstrate a full-scale Hyperloop system, and to have the most advanced technology and the most experienced team in the industry. Hyperloop One, raised over $400 million from investors, including Virgin Group, DP World, and SNCF. It also secured partnerships with governments and organizations in various countries, such as the UAE, India, Russia, and the US, to explore the feasibility of building Hyperloop routes. It built a 500-meter test track in the Nevada desert, where it conducted several tests of its Hyperloop components, such as the pod, the propulsion, the levitation, and the vacuum. In 2020, it achieved a historic milestone by conducting the first human test of a Hyperloop pod, reaching a speed of 107 miles per hour in a few seconds. Hyperloop One seemed to be on track to make the Hyperloop a reality and to revolutionize the transportation industry. But behind the scenes, the company was facing a series of challenges that would eventually lead to its downfall. One of the biggest challenges that Hyperloop One faced was the engineering complexity of the Hyperloop system. The Hyperloop concept was based on unrealistic assumptions and simplifications that ignored the real-world challenges and risks. For example, maintaining a near vacuum in a long tube, making the tube and the pod durable and stable, and ensuring the safety and comfort of the passengers were all very difficult and costly. The system also needed advanced design, testing, and optimization, as well as strict safety and regulatory standards, which were not yet established for the Hyperloop. Another challenge that Hyperloop One faced was the financial viability of the Hyperloop system. The company claimed that the Hyperloop would be cheaper than other modes of transportation, but this claim was based on inaccurate estimates and comparisons that did not account for the true costs and benefits. For instance, the company did not consider the land acquisition, environmental impact, and social acceptance of building a Hyperloop infrastructure, the operational and maintenance costs of running a Hyperloop system, and the demand and revenue potential of the Hyperloop system. The company also did not have a clear business model or a stable source of income, as it depended on external funding and partnerships which were not reliable or secure. A third challenge that Hyperloop One faced was the legal and regulatory uncertainty of the Hyperloop system. 
The Hyperloop concept was not covered by any existing laws or regulations, as it was a new and untested technology that did not fit into any existing category of transportation. The company had to deal with multiple jurisdictions and authorities, each with their own rules and requirements, which could differ and change. The company also had to obtain various permits and approvals, such as environmental safety and security, which could take a long time and involve a lot of bureaucracy and red tape. The company also had to face potential lawsuits and disputes, such as intellectual property, contract or liability, which could be expensive and harmful. The company also had to deal with public opinion and perception, which could be negative or indifferent to the Hyperloop idea. These challenges, along with others, eventually took a toll on Hyperloop One and led to its demise. The company suffered from internal conflicts and scandals, such as the departure and lawsuit of its co-founder, Bam Brogan, the arrest and conviction of its investor, Magomedov, and the sexual misconduct allegations against its other investor, Pishavar. The company also lost the support and involvement of its chairman, Branson, who distanced himself from the company after the Khashoggi murder. The company also failed to secure any contracts or projects to build a working Hyperloop system, despite its numerous feasibility studies and proposals. The company also faced increasing competition and criticism from other Hyperloop companies, such as Hyperloop TT and Transpod, as well as from other transportation modes, such as high-speed rail, maglev, and electric vehicles. The company also struggled to cope with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which disrupted its operations, reduced its funding, and lowered its demand. In December 2023, Bloomberg reported that Hyperloop One would shut down, citing its inability to overcome the technical, financial, and legal hurdles that prevented it from making the Hyperloop a reality. The company confirmed the news and announced that it would sell its assets and lay off its remaining employees by the end of the year. The company's majority owner, DP World, would retain its intellectual property, while its other assets, such as its test track and machinery, would be auctioned off. The company's closure marked the end of an era for the Hyperloop industry and raised questions about the future of the Hyperloop concept. So, what is the current status and future prospects of the Hyperloop industry? Is the Hyperloop still a viable and desirable idea, or is it a dead end and a waste of time and money? Some companies, institutions, and governments are still working on developing and testing the Hyperloop technology, while others have given up or lost interest. The Hyperloop concept is still appealing, but not without doubts and criticisms. The future of the Hyperloop is uncertain, but not without hope and potential. Thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more documentary and gadget reviews. This is Tech Pulse Pro signing off.